What's up, you chuckle fucks? It's your boy, Dark Arku here, with What If Issei Was a Descendant of Sparta, Part 2. So yeah, this is the new thumbnail that I made, actually, during school. I was going to put in a community post saying, if you want this thumbnail or you want the other one, whatever. But nah, I got too lazy. But not the point. Also, uh, what's it called? I did see a lot of comments about the redo of Part 2, or mostly the continue of... Mostly part one redo to part two. And um, people are just like to continue, well, making me continue on the story. So I am going to continue on the story. And yeah, now I could have like done it earlier, but I was too lazy and I was just watching YouTube. Not the point. Now, let me begin into what? Let me shut the fuck up and let me uh, begin. So we begin into mostly Issei helping out this like red hair girl. Well, it's not entirely red. It's kind of like an orangey red. Like, mostly, this girl also seems to be kind of, like, tomboy, uh, tomboyish. What I mean about tomboyish, she's kind of affect him with a dude. But, of course, she's only here to move into this town. But, yeah. This is where, well, Issei is right now helping her move. Of course, this is where, well, her name is, well, mostly from Issei understanding. Her name is, well, her name is Mariliona, and this is where, well, Mostly, she said Mariana Phoenix. When this is where, well, Issei was interested. The fact that this person, last name is like a bird, like a flaming bird. If he can remember right. But he doesn't really care. Of course, where Mariana does kind of ask him for mostly for his help to kind of move in. But yeah, this is where, well, Issei just helps out a little bit. This is where he does summon all his familiars. Because mostly this person should know about the supernatural. So, of course, he doesn't really mind summoning out one familiar. He summoned out a golem just to help out also. But, yeah. This is where, well, Issei has actually learned, not really learned how to fully kind of control these familiars. Or not even control them. They mostly have a free kind of will of their own. But this is where, well, for some reason, the smartest one out of all three familiars is mostly the griffin being the bird. Because he literally can talk and say whatever. He also cusses a lot. Also, if you have never watched mostly, uh, or not watched, or mostly played Don't Make Cry 5, um, you can understand that basically this is the same Griffin from Don't Make uh, Cry 5 because he says it's a descendant of Sparta, but yeah. And also a descendant from mostly uh, Virgil, but yeah. Virgil Bloodline, but not the point. So yeah. He's going to be kind of the same, always kind of cussing, making jokes, and other things. But don't worry about that. This is where, well, mostly the golem kind of helped out and kind of grabbing some of the stuff of mostly Mariana. And this is where, well, she is kind of just very amazed and interested in the fact that this person summoned out a familiar. This is where, well, she questioned if Issei's a devil. Which, mostly, not really question, no. She already knows that Issei's a devil, but very very interesting in the familiar that Issei summoned out. He summoned out by a paper. This is where, well, Issei is right now reading a book, and of course he can carry stuff. He doesn't look too pathetic and weak in her kind of case, even though he basically looks like he's wearing baggy-ass clothes. This is where, well, he's kind of just reading mostly on his book. And this is where, well, it's just a book that she just noticed. I only have a cover of V. And this is where, well, Issei is just looking mostly towards where the golem is kind of putting all the stuff at. This is where, well... Issei kind of questioned in Mariana and where to actually put the stuff. This is where Mariana kind of looks at him, curious, and this is where she says, Oh, don't worry about it. Just put it in that room. This is where, well, Issei nodded. And of course, you notice this, like, house to be quite big for one person. Well, not big enough, but quite big. This is where Issei questioned if she has any more roommates. This is where, well, Mariana kind of says, Yes. She does have more uh, roommates, and of course, some of them are quite psychotic. She, she says it in a very sarcastic tone a little bit, but at the same time, at the same, it's kind of playful, but not really. Serious at the same time. She says that mostly her roommates are quite psychotic half the time. Some of them act like her, but not much, but yeah. Issei kind of nodded, and this where, well, mostly Mariana asked him, and how long has he been a devil for? He says, like, less than a month, you can say. This is where she's surprised. Less than a month? Hmm. So you're just a newly reborn devil. So what happened to you anyway? He says, like, you can say that my ex killed me. 
and then I got room five. Actually, now that I think about it more, ah, uh, mm. never mind. This is where well, Mariana says, "What do you mean?" This is where well, he say just pause there for a second, N and never mind. He says, "You don't need to know about that." This is where Mariana says, "Hmm, what do you mean?" This is where Issa says, "I just I just got killed by my ex." Issei right now thought of something in his head. How would Rias even know where he was at in the first place when he was dating Rainer? It's impossible until he realized about the familiars. This is where, well, Issei is actually going to probably talk to mostly Griffin to probably ask him about mostly the familiar contract things and other things. Because it's a familiar, the familiar. He just wants to know familiar information about stuff. This is where, well, Mariana kind of just looks at him, curious for a second. And this is where, well, she then kind of summons out her own familiar. This is where, well, she uses an orange magic circle. And instead of summoning out like some kind of phoenix or something from her bloodline or anything, she summons out this lion. This like kind of very powerful, uh, mostly orangey kind of lion. This is where the lion kind of roars. And this is where, well, mostly Issei is surprised. So where Issei says, huh? Wait, are you not a human? This is where Mariana says, Of course I'm not a human. I'm a full-blooded, well, devil. You can say that I am from the Phoenix family. And it seems that since you're actually quite new to the whole devil contract and other things, I won't blame you about stuff. Hmm. This is where, well, he says, said, Uh, okay. This is where, well, she then looks at Issei and saying, how strong is your familiar against my familiar? Since you might be just a brand new, a brand new devil, but still your familiar looks powerful. So I'm guessing you're powerful also, because, well, just from the fact that you seem to be holding in your power. Issei looks at her quite a questioningly, but doesn't work well. He says, "I'm not gonna fight you. This is only a contract, and I'm not here to battle." This is work well. She then kind of shows this kind of vicious grin and says, Oh, really? How about this? After your little kind of other contract, because I can see that you have two contracts right now holding on to. It's my contract and then another person's contract. After that contract, how about a little spar? And she then kind of has a vicious grin on her face. He says, I can't really do that. I'm going to go see my uncle after a while. This is where, well, she then pouts and says, Really? Fine. Hmm. So when do you have time? This is where, well, Issa says, well, since this is a brand new week, I don't know how many contracts I'm going to have to have, but whatever. I don't even think I need contracts anymore. What? Whatever. This is where, well, she didn't question me more further because she does have double hearing and hearing Issa what he kind of says under his breath. This is where, well, Issa seems to really not care about saying anything under his breath because, well, yeah. This is where, well, she would question more later, but this is where, well, she then sees how mostly the golem already finished kind of, like, putting stuff up. This is where, well, the golem kind of, like, goes back towards Issei, and Issei kind of just says, come back, uh, golem, or mostly Nightmare. This is where Nightmare does come back into being a paper, and this is where, well, Issei kind of just puts it next to his pocket. Issei says, well, other than that, I should be going. This is where, well, Issei kind of walks through the front door, but before walking through the front door, this is where, well, he noticed presence actually kind of going through the front door, like the front door literally opened wide. Issei was about to get hit in an instant until Issei jumps back in an instant. This is where, well, Issei said, what the hell? This is where a couple of people started kind of going inside the house, and this is where Maliana said, oh, great. Um, just go from the uh, back door. Don't, uh... Or mostly, hmm. This is where, well, one person says, Mariana, what the hell is that? Or, uh, Mariana, what the hell is that? Why is there a guy in the house? This is where, well, mostly some of the others start questioning. Issei doesn't really care about who these people are and really just wants to kind of get to his next contract and just hurry the shit up so he can go talk to, uh, talk to his uncle. This is where, well, he sees a red-haired girl. Of course, her red hair is kind of like a scarlet red a little bit. This is where, not like, what's it called, crimson red, like, uh, Rias, but this is where, well, he knows the others. They all have kind of different type of hairs. They all look kind of different. Some, one of them has kind of whitish hair and kind of looks 
kind of depressing. One of them has black hair and kind of has a psychotic grin on their face and doesn't work well. Some other people, blah, blah, blah. Issa says, is there another way out of here? This is really on says, there is. I mean, you can jump out that window that's open. Issa says, I see. Well, I'll be going there. Uh, also, give me something that's mostly my master can shut the hell up most of the time. This is where, well, Issa said with such an uncaring tone. This is where, well, really on says, oh, right. Hmm. Ah, you know, I, I think I got this. This is where she summons out from a uh, dimension kind of like dimension kind of uh, storage. And this is where she pulls out like a phoenix tear and just gives it to Issei. Here, you can, your private master would be really happy to understand that a phoenix tear uh, from mostly Mariana or Mar Mariana uh, Phoenix kind of gave you. What's, who's your master anyway? Issei says, uh, Rhea's grammary. Yeah. I see, the Grimmery. Hmm. Tell her that mostly this Phoenix chair will help her out in the whole long run against my brother. This is where, well, he says, brother? Mostly little brother, but not the point. Just tell her this. If she ever needs help with that bastard, I will beat the shit of him for her. This is where, well, he kind of sees the two feet grin and murders kind of attempt from her, and this is where, well, Issei's face becomes a little tinted red a little bit. And this is where, well, Issei then shakes his thoughts and says, Sure. And this is where, well, Issei takes the Phoenix tear mostly with him. And this is where Issei then summons us one of his papers. And this is where he says, Griffin, come out. This is where he ruptured the paper. And this is where a bird appear. Right now grabbing Issei from the arm and right now flying him straight towards the window. This is where, well, the Griffin flies throughout the window and even Issei. This is where Mariona says, Interesting. He has actually two familiars. Then that third paper could be a third familiar. I wonder how powerful he is. <laughs> this is where she starts smiling kind of sadistically at the same time having a little bit of blush on her face. Just to understand how strong Issei will be. Issei then disappears and goes to his next kind of contractor. But yeah. His next contractor is actually a normal human. And that is, that is none other than what they call mostly Catherine. This is where... Well, he says he's right now flying with the griffin. This is where well, he says, says, well, I should keep this and hold. This is where the griffin says, where is the situation you have been? What the hell was this? A fucking age anime kind of fucking uh, relationship you were in? Or what the hell was it? He says, says, don't know and don't care. All I know, I'm going to have to be there next week or something for a fight with, between her familiar and our, uh, well, my familiar. So that means you, Nightmare, and Shadow are going to have to help me in a battle. Think of it like a Pokemon battle. Griffin says, really? Really, Pokemon? I am not no damn Pokemon. He says, yeah, 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 I, I know. I can't ride you like normal birds in Pokemon. This is what, well, Griffin just scoffs and says, you're such an annoying brat. This is what, well, he says, yeah, 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 yeah. Just kind of get me to my next contract. And where's that? This is where Issei looks at the paper and sees that it's somewhere... Really, it's somewhere near the kind of outskirts of town. And this is where, well, he says, this, over there on the outskirts of the town, let's go. This is where, well, the griffin decides to shake his head and decide to fly. This is where, well, they're flying for a while until he sees mostly a group of people. And, of course, the person who actually asked for this. He actually turns around the paper to actually see who the hell actually asked for this. And it was none other than Catherine. Issei says, never mind, never mind, never mind. Let's not go there. This is where the griffin noticed Issei's kind of tone of voice and decides to grin a little bit and says how about let's go there then he says no you stupid bird no don't you dare that's where well the bird decides to let go of him and he says wait you this is where he says griffin this is where well the griffin kind of grins and decides to turn into paper and he says grab it he says oh you fucking oh whatever he was about to fall down to the ground until he summons out nightmare to nightmare just grabbing him in an instant and sorry he says oh thank god i hate that Fucking bird. I will fucking cook you, you stupid chicken. This is where, well, Issei then kind of unsummons his, what's it called, golem, mostly nightmare, and of course put it back into a paper form. This is where, well, Issei gets out of, well, mostly the tree line, and of course Issei seems to be, well, in a very, dis mostly disabled kind of mess on his hair and other things. Issei says, okay. <sighs> He says he's Catherine and Moriyama. Moriyama and Catherine looks at him confusedly. And this is where, well, they're about to scream, saying, Perper! This is where, well, he says, pulls out the paper, gives it to Catherine. 
and says, What the fuck do you want? This is right, well, Catherine seems confused and shocked and actually pretty shocked with Issei's voice. And this is where, well, he said then looks around his freaking body to look for his book. And this is where, well, he found it and this is where he pulls it out just to kind of read more. Just so he can be calmed down without being in a rage for a second. From the fact that the griffin literally let go of him and, of course, turned back into a paper. And this is where, well, he said, he said, so what do you want exactly? He looked back up from his book. Just to read a couple of, like, words in the book. This is where, well, Catherine says, uh... Well, um, that's, uh, we wanted mostly, uh, Issei, or not Issei, we wanted actually Kiba to come with us to kind of go to, like, the beach or the movies. Because our instance says, is that why you guys are the outskirts of freaking cool? Oh, for fuck's sakes. I don't really have a telephone line or mostly, I don't have anything to call in with. Uh, my magic still sucks. Ah, oh, this sucks. Actually, wait, no, I do have him. I, have, I don't know where he's at. Oh, God. Well, you can deal with that later. You can uh, ask for another contract and just kind of ask for this time a specific detail of who you want. Don't just say that you want a male. That's where, well, both Catherine and Moriyama kind of just blush at the instantly. Mostly the insult and mostly at the same time just the fact that they're kind of dumb as hell to even say male. This is where, well, literally he says say detail enough to say blonde hair or like actually goldenish blonde hair. Because if you say dirty blonde, I think they will mistake that for Sanji. Bluish eyes, crystallized blue eyes, I think so. I can't remember. It was, yeah, it was a car. Kiba's eyes again. Issei said, I think they're blue or gray. I can't fucking remember. Say, I don't know what his skin color is. He said, really, because I don't care. With the mole somewhere in his face, I don't remember. With the suit that looks nice half the time, I look like a, I'm a homeless man. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even care about that, wearing these clothes half the time. Why am I wearing these clothes? Ah, for fuck's sake. This is where, well, Issei used a bit of magic to actually clean, it, clean himself up. Because even though he sucks at magic, he can use a bit of it to change his clothes in an instant. To look like those that he was mostly wearing during the time he was at his uncle's. So right now, he just basically has a grayish kind of jacket. A blackish kind of like scarf. And this is where, well, with some black pants. And this is where, well, black kind of shoes or black boots, that many. This is where, well, he says, that's better. <sighs> this is where he also had black fingerless gloves. This is where he says, that's so much better. Not the point. This is where, well, Issei said, other than that, go ask for the goddamn pretty boy. You could just even say pretty boy. Actually, no, they're probably mistaken for me also. Even though I'm not pretty, I'm actually the opposite of pretty. You could say ugly, but I don't care. <laughs> Issei said, other than that, you guys just wasted your freaking time. Issei starts walking back, and this is where, well, Issei still reading his book, and this is where, well, he reads one of the poems in this word well. The poem says mostly, um, is it word well? He says, I curse my stars in, in bitter and wound and death made my love so high and so low. Or, uh, wait. Yeah. Wait. So it says, that made my love so high and me so low. This is where, well, you say close to the book in an instant. And this is where, well, both of them just look confused and why Issei even, like, read a poem from the book. Because they're kind of, contained, did that book actually contain poems? They did kind of read once a time, well, one uh, time on Issei's kind of, like, book. Because when they were in school, they were kind of confused in what Issei was reading. People thought he was just reading something like H anime or something. But really, it was just a bunch of poems written in cursive. And no one can actually understand if they actually learn cursive. Which mostly Catherine and Moriyama were actually content. But mostly it was kind of in English. So yeah. This is where, well, Issei said, other than that, I'll be going. This is where, well, he rips off one of the papers. Well, a bluish kind of paper. And this is where it summons a griffin. And this is where griffin says, ah! Well, we're back. Also, Shakespeare, what the hell are you reading again? Never mind. So where are we going now? We're going to my uncle's house. Now let's go. 
This is where, well, he has his hand kind of like hold up like if mostly the bird should land on his arm. And this is where the bird kind of grabs his arm. And this is where it starts flying up. This is where, well, the bird starts kind of like lifting his ear away. And this is where he says, well, bye-bye. Go ask for the pretty boy. Other than that, I'll be going. This is where, well, the bird right now flies away. And this is where, well, he says, well, I did one contract down. Should be good enough for fucking Rias. Other than that. Let's go to my uncle's house. We go into Issei getting towards his uncle's house after kind of the griffin letting go of him. And Issei landing down doing a kind of barrel flip. Well, mostly a barrel roll after he kind of landed down. This is where, well, he got up to his feet. And this is where, well, the griffin came back as a paper. While Issei kind of went up to his, like, uncle's house. Issei opened the gate, kind of closed it, and decides to go up to his mostly uncle's, like, door. He knocks at it. No one answered. Knocks at it harder. No one answered. Issei then screams out saying, Wake up, you fucker! This is where, well, mostly he hears groaning and of course someone going downstairs. And this is where Issei says, God damn this idiot. Of course, the where, well, Issei was already annoyed the fact that his uncle is still fucking asleep. And this is where, well, his uncle woke, opened the door and says, What the hell do you want, you little brat? Issei says, Stop. Okay. I would tell you to stop, like, going to sleep so late. But I know you do that on purpose, so you just don't have to wake up in the morning. <laughs> I don't do that, you brat. I go literally kill devils. This is where, well, he says, well, I'm a devil. I was a devil, but now I'm 50% Spartan. But that's not the point. This is where, well, mostly Dante looks confused at him. This is where, well, he says, let me explain what happened. Or what mostly my familiars told me. This is where, well, mostly they go inside and of course Dante, even though he's half asleep, he now understands what Issei is talking about. Issei was basically talking about his like, having the piece, the evil pieces in his body, but when after t uh, touching the Yamato, uh, it did kind of destroy the pieces out of his body and injected them, but at the same time kind of transforming that Spartan bloodline that he had for 14%, not to 50%, making him a half human, half Spartan. This is where, well... Dante now nodded and saying, well, you have at least 50% while I have 34. That's fucking great. Where the hell do I get these evil pieces so I can just a actually use with the Cobra Billion to mix it, my blood up to 50%? This is where, well, he says, oh no, I can't tell you. Oh really, you can't fucking tell me, can you? Just ask any devil. They already fucking know how I look like. Just get one of those evil pieces and inject in my body so I can inject it out and turn it into a 50% devil. And besides, I should have that beautiful white hair just like my, uh, what's it called, grandfather had. This <laughs> where he's almost just bursting in laughter. And he says, yeah, that's complete bullcrap. This is where, well, mostly Dante glares at mostly his nephew and says, shut the hell up, you little brat. This is where, well, he says, what? I'm just saying. Dante with white hair doesn't look that great. Virgil with white hair looks amazing. Shut up, you brat. You're only biased because your grandfather is literally Virgil Sparta. In Nero, but not the point. He says, uh, So, I only came here to kind of start training on my Spartan abilities. <sighs> Can't you just relax for once in your life? He says, No, I have already relaxed for... 17 years. I want to at, le at least actually start training in my Spartan powers. <sighs> so you're already rested up and other stuff, blah blah blah. <sighs> you're basically already wanting to start in the whole powers of Sparta. Yes. This is where, well, we say response towards Virgil. Or not Virgil, mostly Dante. Dante said, okay, fine. Get up, brat. We're going to go downstairs to train you on sword technique. Okay? This is where, well, Issei kind of goes downstairs. And of course, the where, well, Issei right now is holding a katana. Mostly a wooden kind of katana. And this is where, well, Dante is holding a great sword. And this is where, well, it's made out of wood also. But this is where, well, he kind of says, okay, Issei, let's start this. This is where, well, Issei nodded. And this is where Issei rushes at Dante with blinding speed. Right now, trying to cut at him. This is where Dante managed to jump up by using the sword to lift himself up. And this is where, well, Issei winds his eyes after seeing how Dante did that. This is where, well, he knows that mostly he can't do that with the katana. Maybe he could, maybe he can't. But this is where, well, 
Issei then tries to swing up, but this is where Dante already swing down. This is where Issei couldn't block it because mostly the weight of the swords are different. And this is where Issei had to dodge. So, of course, he just rolled out of the way. And this is where, well, he tries to kind of recover himself up, but before getting hit again from Dante. This time, Dante just swings vertical. This is where Issei managed to block with what's it called, the wooden katana. But if he felt kind of, well, mostly not not in the right stance which he isn't in the right stance but this is where well his sword almost did kind of like flung out of his hand but luckily he might still have it in the grasp and this is where he swings to the right and try to hit dante in the face but this is where dante already blocked it with the great sword and this is where he kicked isa in the stomach isa coughs up some spit and then gets pushed back this is where well Issei then tries to rush straight towards Dante with the, well, sword to aim to the left of his head. But this is where, well, Dante then blocks it again, grabs Issei from the hand, pulls him in closer, and then hits him with a, uh, mostly, head bump. This is where, or head bump. This is where, well, mostly, Issei then gets, mostly, to shovel, and this is where Issei's like, damn it. Ugh. Issei felt like he was going to fall backwards. Dante says, okay, Brett, so you already seen my fighting skills. I've been only kind of holding a little bit back, but not gonna lie, you're pretty trash at fighting. Easy, easy. Ugh, damn it. Just fall down, kid. You can recover later. This is it not happening. Easy right now activates a boosted gear in his hand, even though he's not trying to. This is where Easy tries to rush at Dante in an instant, which Dante was surprised. This is where Dante right now throws the katana in an instant in front of him, and this is where, well, Easy managed to catch up from the handle and tries to swing it. To the right by trying to punch Dante from the left. Or mostly, not punch him from the left, well, mostly punch him from the right. And using the katana to the left. This is where, well, Dante managed to block the punch from mostly Issei. From the, even though he had the gauntlet, the boost to get on. And right now, blocked the katana and Issei by actually cutting it. This is where, well, Issei widened his eyes. And this is where, well, Issei felt so weak and tired. So he fought forward. This is where Dante managed to catch him and says, Whoa, 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 little brat. God damn, I had to catch you just like you when you were younger. Well, whatever. I'm surprised you used to boost the gear, even though you were such a dis uh what's it called? Distable kind of mostly mess. Whatever. This is where well, Dante kinda of lift him up and just decide to bring him towards his mostly room. Or his well mostly Issei's room, not his room. Issei's room. Or mostly when Issei ever comes back, but yeah, or come to his house, but yeah. Issei wakes up and kind of looks so confused in this way. When Issei kind of starts kind of blinking his eyes because he feels like he's seeing blurred images. This is where, well, he managed to fully come back to life. And this is where he says, what, what, what happened? This is where, well, the griffin says, you just got knocked the fuck out. This is where, well, it's just like, oh, grand, that, that's not something that I actually wanted to hear. Uh, this is where, well, the panther and mostly the golem are right now in their kind of, like, baby form. So this is where, well, you can see the griffin is not in the baby form. But this is where, well, <sighs> he says, hey, great, a talking chicken is right now talking to me. <clears throat> this is where, well, the griffin says, huh? Did you just call me a chicken? Why, you little... Brat! He says, hey, Oh, please, chicken, stop talking to me. Unless you want to get cooked, I refuse to be talking to a chicken. Whatever, you brat. You realize it's already kind of 10 o'clock. You slept for at least two hours. He said, woke up in an instant and says, Wait, what? That means trying with my uncle? Ah, oh, shit. I'm such an idiot. <sighs> 10 o'clock and I have to get back to the house. This is where Issei tries to get up in an instant. But this is where when he tries to get up, he fell down in an instant, falling from his bed. Issei feels so tired. He's just like, damn it, why do I feel so tired? This is where the boosted gear or mostly Drake inside his head says, that will be because of me. You used to boost the gear, you, you kind of did boost it up twice. But since you have your body to be not that physically built that much you didn't you wouldn't been able to hold two boosts well you were already disabled i don't know why you decide to even make it worse but yeah that's where well he says shut up that that wasn't on purpose he just said 
He tries to get up once again, but this is where he feels his body unable to move. Which a panther decides to kind of grab him, actually turning into a big form, and grabbing him from the collar and decides to put him back in the bed. He says, wait, no, I have to get to the house. This is where, well, mostly his uncle kind of opens the door and says, hey, Brett, you, you good? This is where, well, he says, yeah, I'm good. He says he tries to get up, but this is where the panther's right now on top of him. This is where, well, the griffin says, no, he's not good. You fucking hit him in the head, probably giving him a goddamn concussion, you idiot. I don't know what you mean about if he's good. You're going to have to call his goddamn parents about the fact that gave him a goddamn concussion. This is where, well, mostly we'll Dante did grab the bird and just throw him to the side and says, ah, fine, I'll call what's a call. We'll mostly your mother. She's probably going to give me an earful for the fact that you're not doing good. This is where, well, he says, what about when I have to go to school? Ah, uh, mmm. Just say that you basically hit yourself too hard in the freaking wall to give yourself a concussion. He says, oh yeah, my mom would definitely believe that. It's not like you probably grabbed me from the head and then smashed me to the wall. Shut up, brat. It'll be better like this because I don't want to have to get an earful from my sister kind of annoying me saying blah, 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 blah. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, Tries to get up, but of course he falls back asleep because, well, he's already too tired. This is where, well, mostly Dante sighs, and this is where he then decides to call mostly Mika. So Mika gets a call, and this is where, well, Mika was kind of, well, cleaning, well, kind of like washing the dishes because she already made kind of like food for her husband and her kind of daughter in law. So what? And this is where she hears from the other side, and it's none other than Dante. This is where, well, Mika says, hey, Dante, why are you calling at this hour? This is where, well, we'll see, Dante say, sorry there, Mika, were you asleep? No, I'm kind of just washing up the dishes. I'm also waiting for the fact that Issa hasn't came back home. Ooh, that would be uh, a little f small problem. You see here, um, Issa decided to visit my house and tripped in the middle, well, mostly the midway down the stairs and kind of gave himself a concussion. He can barely walk, so yeah, I might have to take him to the hospital tomorrow. You might have to call the school for the fact that the absences. This is where, well, Mika sighs and says, You idiot. You probably, I feel like you, no, no, I don't believe this bullcrap most of the time. I feel like you gave him a concussion. What, no, what, what, what the, Dante said, oh, I'm so hurt. The fact that you believe I hurt him. Is so wrong in so many levels. That's what Aramika says. But am I wrong though? I feel like you were the one to give him the concussion. N n no, no. Why, why would I ever hurt my dear nephew? That's what Aramika says. Dear nephew. Huh. Don't you always call him like a little brat towards yourself or blah, blah, blah? This is where, well, Virgil says. No, this is where, well, Mika says, shut up already, you bastard. Just make sure to go, to make him go to school on, well, Wednesday then. I will call the school, and if something just ever happens again, I will go over there and beat the crap out of you myself. And making your ass go into a coma for two years. Don't make me go over there and use double trigger on your ass. This is where, well, we'll see, don't see, why in his eyes, says, yes, miss. This is where, well, we'll see, uh, Mika then decides to hang up in this is where, well, right now, Dante watch up and says, well, she hasn't changed. She will still kick my ass. Even if I am the victim, shouldn't piss her off later. Nope, 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 I should not piss her off. She will kill me and then see if I piss her off any more further. Well... Time to go up to our mostly Issei's room. We go into mostly the next day, and Issei is just basically training on trying to perfect the first stance, and the second stance, and mostly all the stance for mostly how to hold the katana much more better. But yeah, Dante also does teach him in how to use like a great sword and other things, just to see if Issei might be able to hold rebellion later on. But yeah, also decides to train him on his physical body and just gave him a what's it called training a regimen to actually well follow to always kind of get his body to the perfect kind of like built stance but yeah 
This is where, well, Issei has also tried to learn magic a little bit more than just changing clothes, but other than that, wait, uh, from either Dante or even Diedrich or even the fact from his familiars. His familiars does tell him about how to use it, but not much. Mostly it's Griffin that's telling him, but yeah. Diedrich just tried to try to teach him the basics, while mostly Dante would try to train him in how to use, well, other magics for mostly the Spartan family, but yeah. But we go into the next day after death. We go into Wednesday. Issei is getting back to school. Of course, where, well, Issei did kind of like get almost his hair fully dyed into white. Man should go back to, well, brown because mostly Dante still has powers a little back. Just so, well, if anything else happens, that, yeah, um, so he won't get caught by the devils to find out that he's Spartan. This is where, well, he says it, okay. This is where we go into the next day of mostly, it's now Wednesday, and he says going towards mostly his school. He says he's still reading, and this is where, well, he still has a dark kind of presence around him, a dark aura. This time it's way darker and different. This is where, well. He says he's reading his book while walking through school. This is where, well, people are confused to see Issei. Or not confused because they see the pervert trio, but they're kind of confused to seeing him read. This is where, well, Issei is getting to his class. But before getting to his class is where he sees a blonde-haired man with kind of like darkish blue eyes kind of talking towards a white-haired girl and a red-haired kind of girl. Issei ignores him entirely and this is where, well, the blonde-haired dude kind of says, Hey! You're Issei, aren't you? This is where, well, Issei turns around and says, And you're Sanji. Do you need something? Sanji says, Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Sorry about the fact that I was keep hitting you in the uh, throat. This is where Issei says, It's fine. Just to let you know that even though you were hitting me in it, which is a prickish fucking move, you got hit even worse from the fact that Konako attacked you. A rook. Yeah, they're like a bitch. Hey, wanna be friends or something? It seems that like you changed your entirely different personality. From being a pervert, you actually changed to being a... Uh... Issei decides to kind of open his book. And decides to look at him while I keep reading her book. And this is where, well, Issei says, what, a poem? Please don't tell me you're gonna tell, uh, well, say I became Shakespeare. I already heard that before, and I don't want to hear it again. So, just know this, that, sure, we can become friends. Maybe. I don't know. Other than that, I'm walking away. Issei starts walking away, but yeah. This is where, well, we go into mostly, uh, Issei kind of just saying, yeah. Issei just kind of, like, looks, uh, towards, we'll see, Sanji, and of course, he doesn't really say a poem, but this is where, well, he just walks away and kind of keeps reading on his poem. This is where, well, we'll see the white-haired girl and even the red-haired girl kind of just looks at Sanji confusedly. While well, Sanji says, yeah, I have no clue. Um, he did change quite a bit. Mostly his personality doesn't seem to be staring at girls no more. Which, I'm gonna ask, did he stare at you? This is where Momo and even Toma just shake their heads saying no. While well, mostly Issei walks towards the class. Now, of course, we go into a time skip of him getting towards mostly the, um, well, mostly, uh, orphan. Oh, well, not orphan, no, the uh, occult. This is where, well, the occult research club, and this is where, well, Issei walks in it, and this is where, quietly again, just really not making noise, being too loud, or any of that, just reading his poems, and really not caring too much. This is where, well, uh, Rius noticed Issei again, and this time he's actually the first one there, and of course where Rius, she is having no clothes on, and this is where Issei just said, you can literally just use magic to literally put on clothes, I don't know why you're not doing that fast enough, this is where, well, Rius seems surprised, this is where Rius said, ahem, <clears throat> fine, this is where she puts on the school uniform, while Issei looks up and says, well, it seems I wasn't here yesterday because I was someone with concussion. Don't question why and how the hell I got it. Just gotta know that I got it. This is where, well, Rhea say, sighs and says, Okay. So, did you finish any of your contract before your concussion incident? He says, No, well, yes. He says, pulls out mostly a paper. 
and the file and other things. Issei puts it on Rhea's table and says, this is mostly a phoenix tear. The person that gave me it was mostly, before Issei can question, say, wait. Mostly Rhea says, where the hell did you get a phoenix tear? This is where, well, Issei says, before you gotta cut me too much easier, let me explain. I met up with someone who was from a phoenix clan. I don't know much about the, about the 72 pillars, and I don't really care about the whole 72 pillars bullcrap. Uh, you did tell me one time, and I think I don't care that much. <sighs> Her name, this is where, well, uh, Rhea says, did you meet up with Rise of Phoenix? This is where she whined her eyes, and this is where Issei says, I said her. I don't, she wasn't even a dude, I don't think so. She act tomboyish, but not really. This is where, well, Rhea seems confused. Her? So that means you met up with another Phoenix. Who did you meet up with? Can I fucking... He says, okay. Take, br take breaths before I fucking snap. Her name was Mariana... Yeah, Mariana uh, Phoenix. This is where Rhea surprised and says, uh, you, you met up with her? But why would she ask for her contract? She was moving in. I don't care too much. Uh, she said that if you ever need help with someone named Riser Phoenix, just like you said a while ago, to kind of contact her because she would rather beat the shit out of him than ever deal with him. This is what Rhea's is surprised to hear mostly um, Mariona to actually be willing to help her out with the whole marriage bullshit. This is where, well, she wasn't expecting any Phoenix to be on her side until she now met Mariona. This is where, well, Rhea says, okay. I'm gonna need you to get on contact with her again. He says, like, what, what do you mean on contact with her? I mean, in a shape of every, what, however you get in contact with her, I want you to ask her some help and also, um, however she wants it, okay? This is where, well, he says, and how the. He says, I swear to God, this is gonna take so much bull crap from my fucking. Fine, I swear to God, I can't just stop with this whole bull crap. This is where, well, Issei said, whatever. Issei lay back on the couch and decides to kind of keep reading the poem. This is where Rhea is kind of questioning what Issei is exactly reading. This is where Issei made, well, kind of talked about, what I haven't talked about. He read on one of the poems and this is where, well, he said. This is where, well, Issei says, as an, well, as the heir to a bird or... A fish to the sea or whale. The f sea to a fish. The con uh, well, mostly, uh, the contempt to the contemptible. This is where uh, Issei said, yeah, uh, if you want to know what the hell that means, don't question it. So leave me alone and let me read. This is where, well, mostly Issei keeps reading his book and this is where, well, Rhea's kind of seems surprised. But Issei's kind of words and this is where, well, she then thinks about it more and this is where, well, she then nods. This is where she lets Issa read, and of course the room is quiet. Of course, there's no Akano to help her kind of play chess, and she doesn't know if Issa will be smart enough to play chess. There's no uh, Kanako to be eating sweets, and I don't think she doesn't think that mostly Issa will be eating sweets. This is where, well, Kiba's not here yet, even though he'll be kind of like playing with his swords or something, and Azia is not here, so of course it's kind of a quiet room. Issa is getting quite annoyed. But the fact that Reese is kind of just looking at him, kind of wondering and kind of wanting demand from something from him. Mostly she missed a kind of loud personality for a while. Because the reason Issei changed way too fast for her to even, for her liking too much. Issei right now summon out her, uh, well mostly his familiar and that being the kind of griffin. The griffin says, what the hell are we doing here? There's no battle, there's no need to bring you anywhere, so what are we doing here? I don't know, just you talking enough, it's quite a bother, but at the same time, it's quite boring in this room. So I'm going to have to ask you some questions. This is where, well, mostly the Griffin said, ask away, what do you need? Okay. So, about the whole family stuff, and how it has to be private between us. How much can you say that doesn't alert anyone? Hmm, well, about that. I mean, we could talk in a devil language, a very ancient devil language between the whole family. And I haven't actually really touched it. It's, it's interesting. 
then later we can talk about it. This rarity seems contained and confused in why you say someone is familiar, and the familiar seems to be not wanting to say too much stuff. Seeing that Issei and the family seem to be keeping so much secrets. This is where Rios was about to question something until mostly uh, the others started kind of appearing. This is where well, Issei then brings back his familiar back into his, like, well, mostly the paper and decides to keep reading. But yeah, this is where, well, Rios was confused, but this is where, well, she then sees everyone now in the room. But for right now, I'm getting kind of a headache, and so of course I'm going to just leave it off here for part two of this what if. But other than that, have a nice night, day, or whatever, and I'm going to be going. Bye. See ya. I'm also getting really tired, but bye.